but it's a cultural entity. It's like the way that people feel when they're at work, the way that they interact, the things they wear, the way they make decisions, the way that they collaborate, how it's just like general feeling when you're there. And it's a feeling of kind of growth, like, oh my God, we have so much shit to get done, it's unbelievable. That happens at bigger companies, but it's still kind of a startup mentality. Um, or collaboration, which is like, okay, so we're about to climb the largest mountain in front of us, and we need to actually work together to do that. That kind of feels like a startup. Um, okay, I'm gonna use this. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna tell you three things that you absolutely, unequivocally must figure out in yourself. I'm not gonna be able to, how much time do we have? 30 minutes? 15 minutes, 20 minutes, I don't know. Uh -huh. Everybody's here for three hours. This is like your Tuesday night lecture. I'm just kidding, I hate lectures. It's um, okay, so I'm gonna tell you these things and I'm gonna probably talk about why they actually matter, because um, you're going to look at me and be like, that doesn't make any sense here. Um, okay. So, all right, we'll just do this. Um, this was my nice catchy tagline that I forgot to say before asking this question. So, to work for a start, join, or otherwise thrust yourself into a startup, you have to be two things. I think thrusting, by the way, is an appropriate way to join a small company at some times. It, honestly, um, there are just some scenarios where people are circling around companies. Like, we just hired a girl. We just totally, like, pushed her way into our company. She was around. She was an associate with us over the summer. And she, like, just relentlessly would tell me how many problems we were having, where there were big gaps, like, where I couldn't see, what was happening like what she was seeing on the ground and things that she wanted to do for the business. And after two months of hearing this every single day, I was like, okay, we're gonna hire you. I have no idea what we're gonna call you. I don't know what we're gonna be able to pay you, but I'm committed to you being in this company because obviously you have just an incredible insight into what's going on. And you convinced me as a CEO that I need you in the company. So I don't mean thrust in some weird sexual way. I mean thrust like, People push themselves into small companies, into startups, and it actually works. Um, Arjun probably knows that too. Anyway, nice shirt, buddy. Appreciate that. Um, okay. Can everybody read these things? I'm going to take a second because this is a really intense thing to digest here. Three full lines. By the way, I totally feel like I have to be all comedian to like keep everybody entertained. I'm gonna stop that. But all right, so these are pretty heavy topics. Um, here's another question: um, People who are less than six months away from graduating, <laughs> uh, a year or so, two to three years, and I'm not quite sure. I'm just gonna raise my hand. <laughs> All right, nice. Yeah. Okay, so I'll be really honest. Um, these three things are, so for those of you who can't read it, um, I'm asking everybody to be self-aware. I'm asking everyone to be a continuous learner. And I'm asking everybody to be a truth seeker. So these are things that, frankly, you're not going to figure out in your time at Northeastern. You're not going to figure out in your first job. You're not going to figure out your second job. If you decide to go to grad school, you're not going to figure it out there. You're going to pay a lot trying to do it, but you're not going to figure it out. These are things that just take time and constant sort of attention and constant mentorship. Um, and the mentor element being something that I think that's really core to a lot of startups. It's like, hey, we understand who you are. We understand your potential. And we're going to help you grow into who we think that you can become. Um, and part of what a company is generally trying to get you to do is be these three things. And good leaders, good companies are going to help push you on these things. Um, all right. So I'm going to talk about these soon, but I want to just get everybody's questions on this really tiny whiteboard. Um, OK, so let's just fire off questions. You guys be glad because I can't really hear you. So this is like any question. This is about me. This is about 
my company, this is about the last speaker, this is about next week's speaker, this is about joining a company, starting one, my dog, my trip to New York, I don't give a shit. This is just questions that are on the top of your mind that are both, A, they should be answered and they're probably distracting you from paying attention. So we're gonna just take them out and we're gonna put them on the whiteboard. I have a mic over here, anyone has a question? This guy, what do you got? So you, you established your company. How do you hire your first person? And do you hire full time? Do you hire part time? You just promise you'll hire them and have them as free labor. How do you how do you do that? This is how do I hire the first person in my company? Yeah. Okay, it's a good question. By the way, the other trick to this is that I'm not going to answer everybody's question. I'm just going to take them out and write them down, and I'm going to do my best to get through all of them. Um, but there might be some that I don't get to. But I'm not going to answer that now. Great question. Could you just run us through your story? How you started your... Run you through my story. Sure. I will, I promise. You're like, dude, what the fuck? I thought you were going to tell it to me. If you went to hire from friends, fools, and family, how do you take money from family and not feel guilty? Or at least like that to be on your company board. <laughs> so the question is how how do you not feel guilty when taking money from your family to start your business? Oh man. Just keep going, it's all good, I'll turn around eventually. Um, what's your key daily motivator? Key daily motivator. That's going to be really soft and like squishy. I'm a really emotional person and my entire company knows this and they make fun of me for it, but yeah, daily motivator. Okay. What did you do before the startup? Before this? Yeah. Uh, you can just keep going, fire them off, people have them. Go. What was your low time when you started closing your company? But what motivated you to keep on going? By low. When you really thought of closing your company? Okay. And then what motivated you to keep on going? Are you feeling that right now? Because that's the most important thing. It's how you handle stress, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good call. Because every day you feel that. When you're not working on it. It's hard, man. It's not easy. How do you convince a really small company that you're worth paying? Ooh, if they yes. have high cash flow, how do you say, like, I'm worth So this is like, hey, obviously I'm good. You definitely want to hire me. And you're like, I know we do. We'll pay you $5 an hour. And you're like, dude, I'm a human being. Like, I'm standing up. Give me for six. Whatever. Okay, that's a, that's a tough one. Okay, um, right. That's a great question, by the way, and if I can help anybody master that, that would be awesome. Keep going. Don't be the microphone. So, what's your company's net worth and what's your net worth? My network? Net, net worth. Net worth? <laughs> Who's asking that? <laughs> That's a good question. I have a really good answer for that. Are you in finance? Yeah? Okay. Hold on, you already asked one. Hold on, sorry. Do you have, uh, if you have to raise a big capital, like $200,000 plus, how would you go about that for a startup? Okay. Do you hire co-ops? I want to answer this so much, but I promise I wouldn't answer right away. Um, what's the biggest mistake you've seen a startup make? What's the best way for a college student to get involved in startups in Boston? <laughs> Yeah, 
All right, let's take probably like three or four more. What was your strategy of game plan for your startup? <laughs> game plan. We have one. How do you convince a prospective customer to pay for your service or product? Okay. Man, these are really good questions. I'm excited to answer this. This just makes me so happy. Ah. You're like, no, oh, you're really not. I am happy, I promise. <laughs> it does make me excited. What do we got? Anybody else? What's the name of your program? I made it or you made it? I made it. I made it. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> on the same lines, uh, do you have any like tips or tricks for people who don't, who might not have the skills to build whatever they're trying to create about finding people that can help them with that? Pro tips to find builders, find muscle packers. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. We can always take more later. Okay. All right, so here's what I'm gonna try and do. Um, I'm going to try and, and, I'm gonna answer all these questions to the best of my ability. I promise you I'm gonna talk a lot about some and less about others.